Hello dear students, welcome back to learn the remaining part of the topic, Cassius State. I am Dr. Smita Pimple, Professor, Department of Pharmaceutics, P Society's Modern College of Pharmacy, Pune. Students, in previous lecture, we learnt about the difference between ideal gases and real gases. We will just revise it in short while. So molecules of ideal gases, they are point masses and do not occupy any volume. But real gas molecules have certain mass and occupy certain volume. Elastic collagens of particles for ideal gases, non-elastic collagens for real gases. No intermolecular forces of attraction are present. Whereas in real gases, intermolecular forces of attraction, they are very much present. In ideal gases, they does not really exist in environment and is a hypothetical gas, whereas real gases do exist in the environment. Ideal gas obey gas laws at all conditions of pressure and temperature. Real gases obey gas laws only at high temperature and low pressure. So ideal gas equation is PV is equal to NRT. In real gas, it does not obey ideal gas equation PV is equal to NRT. So to correct for the parameters like pressure and volume, the scientist Van der Waal, he suggested corrections and given the equation for real gases which is known by his name Van der Waal's equation for real gases. Let's study about this. So, Johns H. Van der Waal, he is the scientist who has corrected ideal gas equation. The ideal gas equation is based upon the model that gases are composed of particles so small compared to the total volume of the gas that they can be considered to be zero volume point in space. There are no interactions, attraction or repulsion between the individual gas particles. In 1873, Van der Waal, a Dutch physicist, developed an approximate equation of state for real gases that takes these factors into account and a semi-empirical equation based on some experimental evidence as well as thermodynamic arguments, he proposed Van der Waal's equation for real gases. And for his work, he has been awarded 1910 Nobel Prize in Physics. So let's study about first volume correction. According to kinetic molecular theory of gases, ideal gas do not occupy volume, but real gases do occupy volume. And due to this, the volume of gas we consider as the volume of container in which it is placed. But in real gases, you have to take into account that the volume equal to actual volume of gas molecules, this much space is not available for the movement of gas and hence this should be excluded from the volume of gas. Because of this only it is referred as excluded volume and, and this excluded volume is represented by a constant B. So the correction in the volume becomes V minus NB and stands for the number of gas molecules. For one mole the correction will be V minus B. For n number of moles of gases the correction will be V minus NB. This B is also referred as incompressibility for a particular gas because this much volume becomes incompressible. You can compress the gas only up to the final limit that is B. Below this, you can't reduce the volume. So, it is also called as incompressibility. So, this is volume correction. Now, we will study about the pressure correction for real gases. The reason behind introducing this pressure correction in the equation 
is the presence of interaction forces or intermolecular forces of attraction amongst the real gas molecules. These are also referred as internal pressures. Now students pay attention to this figure that pressure is nothing but the hits recorded by the molecules on the wall of container. Now the gas molecule which is present inside the container or we can say in the bulk phase. Now this gas molecule is attracted or having interaction forces perfectly balanced on all sides but this is not the case for the approaching gas molecule so the actual pressure exerted by the gas it will be p is equal to p ideal minus some pressure less which is due to the inward pull by other molecules now this equation can be written as p ideal is equal to the pressure of real gas plus this small p which is the correction. Now how we are going to find out the value of this p? So this less magnitude of pressure is proportional to concentration of A type of molecules and concentration of B type of molecules. A means the molecule which is approaching the wall of container and B type of molecules means the molecules which are pulling this A backward. So this is concentration can be written as number of molecules divided by the volume. It is same for C A and C B. So the final equation becomes P is equal to N square upon V square into A. This A is nothing but the proportionality constant. So this particular value A N square upon V square is the correction for, for pressure term in the equation. So the final equation given by Van der Waals including the pressure and volume correction becomes P plus N square A upon V square into V minus NB is equal to NRT. Where P, V, T and N are the pressure, volume, temperature and number of moles of gases. These proportionality constant A and this B excluded volume, these both are constants referred as Van der Waals constant and their values are specific to a particular gas. Some examples are given on this slide. These are Van der Waals constant for hydrogen, oxygen, methane gas, water vapor, chlorine gas and chloroform. So the values are listed here, constant A and constant B. In previous video, I mentioned about compressibility factor Z. Now, what is this compressibility factor? It is known as compression factor or the gas deviation factor. This is correction factor which describes the deviation of real gas from ideal gas behavior. It is very simple ratio of PV upon RT. So, the ideal gas equation is slightly modified to get the value of Z. So Z is equal to PV upon RT. The deviation from ideality may be shown by a plot of compressibility factor Z against P. This is shown in the graph Z is plotted versus pressure in atmosphere. Now when the value is 1 that means when PV is equal to RT the value of Z will be 1 which is nothing but value for ideal gas. Then this graph of Z versus P, you will get a straight line which is parallel to the axis. So this is ideal gas behavior, but you can see that when it is plotted for real gases like nitrogen, hydrogen and carbon dioxide, you will get the deviation from ideal line. If we study the same relationship that is compressibility factors versus pressure for nitrogen gas at different temperatures then you can get this graph here you can see that as the temperature is increased the deviation from ideal behavior becomes less and less so for 100 kelvin degree temperature 
okay you will get the maximum deviation from ideality as temperature is increased to 160 the deviation becomes smaller and you will get minimum deviation at higher temperature that is for 400 you are getting the line deviated by a very marginal difference than ideal behavior one more observation you can make here that at low values of pressure like when the pressure is approaching to lower values then there is no difference between the ideal and the real behavior but as the pressure is increased then slight deviation you may find so from this graph we can conclude that at higher temperatures and lower pressures you the real gases behaves just like the ideal gases and this particular principle is used for liquefaction of gases how liquefaction of gases takes place using this parameter pressure and temperature you know when gas is cooled the molecules will lose their kinetic energy in the form of heat and the speed of the molecules it will get decreased due to this the molecules will come under the sphere of intermolecular forces of attraction and they can get condensed to liquid at the same time if you apply pressure it will further aid in the liquefaction of gases now before we study it we are going to define certain term that is critical temperature tc critical pressure represented by pc and critical volume by vc what is critical temperature it is the temperature above which the liquefaction of gas is not possible whatsoever great pressure you apply on the gas now what is critical pressure it is minimum pressure required to liquefy gas at the critical temperature and critical volume is volume occupied by a mole of gas at critical temperature and critical pressure next we are going to study about liquefaction methods of gases these are uh, mainly three methods we are going to study in the syllabus faraday's method linde's method and cloudy's method to understand details about these liquefaction methods of gases please watch next video in the series for gaseous state students i hope you understood whatever we covered today before we start with liquefaction of gas please understand the importance of critical parameters in liquefaction critical pressure and critical temperature if you maintain the temperature of the gas well below its critical temperature point and if the pressure is increased above the critical pressure then you can easily get the liquefaction of the gas the details of methods we will discuss in next lecture thank you students for your patient listening and watching this video see you guys